We interrupt this broadcast to briefly plug the Enjoy an Album Patreon. If you like us and want more of us in your ears, then you can simply pay £5 a month and get two extra bonus episodes. Christopher, what else did I get? Add free episodes. You don't need to listen to this shit. That's right. Also, uh, exclusive pre-show, pre-sale access to stuff, our live shows. I did it for my tour. Chris didn't organize it, couldn't, I don't think. But anyway, we get extra stuff. Um, also, you get access to the backlog of episodes. If you're all caught up somehow to all of the public episodes, there's like, pff, how many Patreon ones now? Like, well, I see 15, but that'll increase. 15? Every- you think there's only 15? We've been doing two a, a month for a year. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot I made a collage all of them once. Uh, and it was more than 15 now that I think about it. Yeah, and that was a while ago. So there's been some since then too. Give me some Patreon specials off the top of your head. Hamilton. Hamilton. The Darkness. Yes, that was a good one. Ed Jer- Sheeran. Jerry Cinnamon. Jerry Cinnamon more recently. Jerry Sucker Balls. Um, <laughs> I'd give you an example of what we thought of that. Uh, so yeah, there's loads of stuff in there. It's £5 a month. Uh, we The Ultras are... Um, wonderful people um they sleep well at night they have beautiful skin and that is as a result of listening to two extra episodes of the podcast a month so sign up now patreon.com forward slash enjoy an album hello and welcome to the enjoy an album podcast with liam with now and christopher MacArthur boy 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 hello hey what's up uh we're back in the studio uh we're fucking and sucking <laughs> with the best of them uh, i love the way you know the way fantano ends his reviews no i don't watch needle drop Oh, really? Can't remember why. Uh, he has, uh, oh, okay. He ends his review with transition. Did you like it? Did you listen? And he has this little like rhyming poem about, you know, like a subscribe and comment and what did you think and what should I review and stuff. It's cool. You think we should get a wee poem? Yes. <laughs> but I've only just had that thought now. Right. So, so let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear your Welcome mighty Welcome to crimp. enjoy an album. <laughs> we are listening to uh, the best thing it's rough it, yeah well yeah i mean i am not uh jpeg mafia nor danny brown who we're covering this week um so would you say you were the jpeg mafia or the danny brown of us too um so interesting question because JPEG- they're kind of both spongebob well yes but jpeg is more of a producer isn't he like squidward um and he he's the foundation on yeah, he lays down the found out foundations, which is me. <laughs> you think Squidward lays down the foundations? He does well, have a house. When as he's got that to, fucking uh, oboe out, he is laying down foundations like Andre three thousand. His house also does actually have foundations because it is a house compared to the pineapple or the rock. I think it's very Patrick interesting that you there. constantly say I am Squidward, and yet in the uh, promotional image for our uh, recent episode covering Andre three thousand's flute album, it is yourself that is replicating a classic Squidward stance. But is it not quite SpongeBob-esque to pretend to play an oboe? Come on now, Christopher. Squidward's more than happy to I play an oboe. I can't hear the woodwind for you scraping the barrel with that shit. Um, <laughs> so big news musically this week. Oh. Uh, we uh, regularly uh, talk about uh, Pitchfork as being a source of, well, not only our research, but also, I guess, our musical journalist background. As much as I slag it off. We make fun of it a lot. It's life-changing. Goop on the Grinch. Goop on the Grinch, for sure. And all There's that. A lot of that. Pop to, you know, the Poptimus trend when they kind of shifted away from Arcade Fire and Neutral Milk Hotel and started saying that Beyonce was doing the best albums of the year. And Ye- it's like, listen, she's already selling the most. She can't also be... For sure, the best. There was uh, uh, an infiltration of modern pop into the the pitchfork, and that's not really what, what people go to pitchfork for, or at least it's maybe it clicks, shouldn't be. I, I guess think. it is. Um, but they have it's been also incredible pop music. But they have been folded into GQ. Yeah, Condé Nast bought them about seven years ago. Who is Condé Nast? Condé Nast is. I'm so glad you asked me that. Condé Nast. Condé Nast is Condé Nast responsible bitches. for the new song Goop on the Grinch. Uh, <laughs> now, Condé Nast is a conglomerate. Mm. who owns a lot of different uh, media outlets. So they own GQ yep. and they own... FHM. FHM. I just guessed. Sure. Sure. That's true. I, I just agreed. <laughs> Pretty Condé nasty to me. <laughs> um, but I remember when they bought Pitchfork and people were like, fuck man, that's the end of an era. And then nothing really changed. But now the outcome is... But you know what's interesting though? I do think that if... Sometimes we're reviewing an album from the early aughts and, you know, the Pitchfork review is available. Mm. 
published 2002. Yeah. And you go and read it. And the writing style is very different. Mental. Yeah. Back then. And it's much more online music, blogosphere. Like it is. It was a new journalism. Way less accessible, I guess you would say. But in a way that made it, I guess that's why people went there. Because it was interesting. But stuff like uh, Bell and Sebastian, like when they put out fucking... Um, if you're feeling sinister and I got like a best new music, then the next year they put out Boy with the Thorn on the side. Boy with the Thorn on the side. Boy with the Thorn on the side is me. <laughs> Boy with the Thorn on the side came out and it got like his two or something. Yeah. And you look back and you're like, they were the same quality, those two records. Well, but I saw Dan Lassac versus Scroobius Pip <laughs> shared a screenshot of one of their albums getting a 0.2 0. for Pitchfork. So I actually think over the last few years, they are way less dicks than they used to be. So what's happened is everybody's on the internet now. Mm. So it used to be you could say anything on the internet and, you know, you're anonymous. Fuck it. But now if you put up a 0.2 review of a rapper. They're coming to your house. They're coming to your house. They can find out what your house is. Yeah, you're man. getting doxxed. Yeah, and um, you're probably going to lose all your work and die. And so if you have hoes there, they're going to get scared. Yeah. It's like us when we've done that fucking ratings clip. You're still scared to go to Sheffield. I'm still scared to go to Sheffield. But you're scared to leave the house in general. No, I don't know if that's I a fair. I to leave the house. <laughs> No, I don't know. I love <laughs> staying in and playing Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, Dave the Diver for the Switch. But um, <laughs> So uh, it, it is sad because I wonder if there is something somewhere that is going to fill its place. Because Dean has an interesting place at the moment because Twitter is on its ass. Yeah. As X. is as is Facebook. X. It's called X now. Um, X formerly known as Twitter. Sorry. Uh, Instagram is like the sort of supreme app. For people our age, maybe, but you know, I think younger people are probably on other stuff. It will TikTok, I uh-huh. guess, but TikTok's numbers are falling off as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, there was so we had Web 1.0 was mm. early pitchfork, basically. Sure, everything had a website, mm. and then Web 2.0, the internet got sort of funneled into appified. appified. So, it was all, all of the internet is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc. Social media websites. And now a lot of these social media websites are not doing very well. Mm. And there's a, a sort of re maybe diversification of I the really internet. Hope. I'd love to get some good websites on the go. So if Pitchfork collapses, I guess it probably though is more gonna be replaced by sort of vlogging reviews. People watching. You yeah. your needle drop. People talking about music on video format. Uh, uh, yeah. It's Terrible. Just, <laughs> <laughs> what well, a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uneducated people who really, uh, you know, didn't put the time in studying, maybe dropped out of university even uh, and have the cheek to call themselves musical journalists. Maybe and worked in a guitar shop, but, you know, just but doesn't play guitar anymore. Ma- mainly just talk about their balls. <laughs> Do you know what I watched last night that I hope is the future of media? I watched the, it's like, it's by a website called Dromeo. And they Dromeo? Get, yeah. And have you seen this? Yeah. It's Italian. So class. Dromeo. Dromeo. I, I like, like a, the drum. I like a pasta. I like the drum. Um, yeah. And uh, it's this website. It is class. It's fucking... Basically, they get a drummer to listen to a song with the drums taken out. Oh, and play I, along with I have it. seen this. And it's so good. And last night I watched my favourite French death metal band, uh, which sounds stupid, but there are like three. Uh, Gojira. Mm-hmm. Very complicated drum patterns, really insane drums, and they got the drummer for a country band to listen to the song without the drums. And he was first take, he was like, "I don't understand this at all." Second take, fuck me, man. He does he it. Never plays heavy music. He's yeah. like, "Ain't a drum out with a country drum." Luke Combs, yeah, and he does this. Oh, he's Luke Combs' drummer. Right, okay. And then he goes in, yeah. In the second take, he, f- he doesn't nail it, but he does a really good version of it, like just from the top of his dome of genre music. And then th- he listens to the Gojira one. I was nearly crying because you can see somebody who is like really good at their craft, try and figure something out and then realize how it's supposed to, supposed to be done. Or this guy's interpretation of it, the guy who wrote it. And he's like, that's, I mean, and it's just, I mean, what's that, what are we doing compared to that, you know? Well, that's like watching me do a work in progress comedy show, I think. <laughs> First time you're like, what the? F- is this guy playing country music? What is this? <laughs> By the second show, you will be in tears. You are watching French death metal take place. <laughs> um, um, this week we're talking about Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia. A quick reminder: the scheduling of the episode has changed. Uh, we now have two public episodes, two Patreon episodes, a month released, one a week. Uh, what's the word when they flick switch one? Well, it's complicated, isn't it? Because 
can say something's bi-monthly, but that can mean... Concur- concurrently? No, not concurrently. No, they're not concurrent. They, they switch each one. Alternatively. Yeah. It's really easy. Alternating. Alternating. It's a really simple word. Alternatively. We are alternative <laughs> because we wear Converse shoes. <laughs> Enjoy the episode. <laughs> hey, are your pubes too hairy? <laughs> Do you need help with that? Your groin to hairlicious, hair uh, suit. Is there too much uh, of a positive environment for crabs and lice? Too much fuzz on your coos. Uh, when you get undressed in front of someone you wish to have a sexual time with, are you embarrassed by the state of your nether regions? Having an examination done by a doctor and you're <laughs> self-conscious about how hairy your balls and bits are us too what a shame there's no solution for this kind of problem no wait there is what manscaped oh my god what is that tell me more not manscaping not manscaper manscaped only a stupid person would have called it that by accident yeah. 10 times in a row <laughs> yes i need an idiot it's the below the belt grooming experience it's blade it's not blade free it's blade full it's blameful. <laughs> it's cut free. You won't it's cut, cut free. You... I'm literally closing my eyes in the shower in the fucking rain coming down. Um, I, I shower in the rain and I'm just f- f- not even looking, just buzzing. If you do look, there's a little handy torch which uh, highlights where you're about to trim. Which... <laughs> yes. I've never used the torch. That's what? cool. Yeah, yeah, so Attached little... to the, yes, the lawnmower? A... Yeah, there's a light that comes on that wow. shows you exactly where you're trimming. So you can do it in the dark with your eyes closed and you still hit the remark. You can do it dark. In the, with your eyes closed, in the shower, it's waterproof. You can charge it using USB-C. So you can unplug your phone if you've got a USB-C. <laughs> plug it straight into your pube trimmer. You're, you're, on you're ready to go. You're on a train. <laughs> Please use only use these your plug up sockets to 75%. for phones, laptops, and pube trimmers. <laughs> That's why they have that sign. Don't do that. But what you should Sometimes do- I go into a coffee shop and I sit near a plug socket and I plug my lawnmower <laughs> in so that I could jump into the bathroom, keep it fresh all times. I never want to see a single hair on my balls. Otherwise, I cry. Yeah, I've got a cock like a dolphin. <laughs> uh, it's grey. Grey and uh, endangered. <laughs> Just if you want a funny gift for someone or you it's want... It's not funny. It's not funny. It's, it's fucking useful. serious. Enjoy an album. Uh, no, what's the code again? Manscaped. <laughs> album, album 20. God almighty. You get 20% Can off. Can you believe we get paid for this? Album 20 for a uh, percent off your first purchase uh and and ongoing purchases i you think can, if you don't have a cock and balls you can do it on other stuff but it's mainly made for the cock and balls it's got a word man in the title let's be honest <sighs> that's not getting that topic man you know but hey hmm. it's good it's it's good stuff the pants are good and the underwear the anti-chafing material is to die for uh that's album don't 20 die it, don't die for it enjoy thank you bye You're listening to Enjoy an Album, the podcast where two comedians listen to some of the greatest albums of all time. Part of what makes Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia such a natural pair is that they stick out in similar ways. They're too weird for the mainstream, but too confrontational for the subtle or self-consciously progressive set. And while neither of them would be mistaken for traditionalists, the sample scrambling chaos of tracks like Perfect and... (laughs) Perfect! And shut your bitch ass up slash muddy waters. <laughs> Situ- that song's so class. <laughs> Situate them in a lineage of black music that runs through the comedic ultraviolence of the Wu Tang clan, back through the bomb squad to Funkadelic, who proved just because you were trippy didn't mean you couldn't be militant too. Yes. What a shit hot blurb. Honestly, shout out to Apple Music. Shout out to the blurbiest blurbs in the game. Um, I'm an Apple Music guy, and sometimes they do it right, and that's one of the times. Sometimes Steve Jobs is a winner. Sometimes he's a dead man. And what happened with him? He, he died with cancer. Right. Did, and he was like, refused cancer medication because yes. he was like, I'm to, uh, listen, I invented the iPod. I don't need your goddamn cancer medication. Two months later, he's dead. I decided not to put a screen on the original iPod shuffle. <laughs> I can't get cancer. <laughs> well, listen, bro, you can, and you did. And you're dead. <laughs> yeah, RIP to a real one. Um, so uh, it's one of the rarest seen enjoy an album hip hop episodes. Best, like I, I on a couple of weeks ago, I started the episode by saying, "Hey, uh, what are your resolutions for this year?" And mm. you thought I was talking about 
and your life. I kind of meant for the pod. Re- yep, okay. So you, what were you talking about? I don't know. What about, was your re- resolutions? Reading books and yeah. fucking, I don't know, changing blood type, that that's thing. Yeah. <laughs> OTA. If I, if I can. It's cool now. <laughs> I'm having to it's good, do a lot of transfusions. You got a lot of blood. Um, <laughs> but I'm figuring it out. <laughs> Would that affect players? <laughs> If I if I slowly try to change my entire blood type, would your mom be like, "That's definitely coming out"? I think there would be some uh, broader health implications of trying it's to change your entire Steve blood Jobs type. To do. <laughs> that it's freak like, who's trying cancer. to make himself younger by getting his son's blood put into him. That guy looks so shit. Imagine, I'm trying to imagine if my dad came up and Liam, I've had an idea. <laughs> I want to shave a few years off. Do you know how I've been drinking Guinness nonstop? <laughs> <laughs> I want your sober blood. Son. I want your blood, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your blood, buddy. Come on. Come on. Here's so the anyway, Come on, day. Um, one of my resolutions for the podcast was, uh, you know, I was looking at my list and this or the other. Your list time, of your top 10 albums of the year. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I was like, I listen to hip hop this year. Mm-hmm. You know, really only like three records last year. And I thought this year I want to listen to more hip hop. I want to listen to more heavy stuff. Uh, and that's about it. That's my two. I feel like I, well, you're right. I've just got an eyelash stuck in my eye. I'm sorry. Nothing worse. I'm just getting emotional Look about up. you talking about. Uh, <laughs> I about, want to uh, listen to I more. Just, I just want to listen to some more beats. <laughs> um, so and so, did, as part of your resolution, you have. Uh, I mean, because this album came up on a lot of end of year lists. I noticed when I was trying to figure out my own end of year list, and as always, as I've said many times, it was pretty. Album of the year. It was pretty light on the hip hop front. That is uh, an area of music I don't know much about. A lot of sad ghetto music, for sure. For I am a sad year. girl with a nose ring and a butterfly tattoo on my booty, for sure. Uh-huh. Um, and, and this album appeared a lot on the list. Uh, so now we are talking about it. We were talking about it on the list because we were talking about Karanta. Yes. And then we were talking about the origins of the term scare in the hose, which you weren't That's familiar right. with. That's no, Which is a misogynistic term because personally, I would never scare a hoe. I'm so glad you brought that up because <laughs> I was thinking about this and mm. I don't think mm. um, it is a misogynistic term. Obviously, you shouldn't really use the word hose, but... Um, when they say scare in the hose, that I mean, if you didn't listen to the album of the year episode, it's a term which means when you're back at someone's house after something and you try to hook up, yes. you can't put on death grips. You know, you can't put on mare's bow. The hose are going to get scared. Square pusher, Apex yeah. twin. You just mm-hmm. can't put that stuff on, even though it's funny to listen to. You need to put on something. Can I just say, when I said a moment ago, it's a misogynistic term. Mm-hmm. I would never scare a hoe. Mm-hmm. That was like a joke. That was a joke. Yeah, that was just a fun a fun thing I was saying. I'm kind of making a joke, but also a very serious point. I'm not, I'm not really necessarily accusing them of outright misogyny for calling it scaring hoes. It's like a memed, it's a meme t- title, isn't it? These boys. It's a bit memey. They're a little bit online. But I think the term scaring the hoe is more like it's just not suitable for the scenario as opposed to these women can't handle this music. <laughs> the women are not really scared. <laughs> No. Is the point. They're turned off. Yes. But some of this, controversially, I don't think some of this is whole scary music. Uh, I This is our first point of contention in the, the, okay. in the podcast because none we'll get of, to that. We'll absolutely get to that. none of this could be regarded as anything near fucking music. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. <laughs> what did you know about Danny Brown then uh, and or um, Peggy as he's known to his uh to his fans, JPEG Mafia, were you a big J JPEG or Danny Brown head? You put contour on your albums of the year last year, did you? I remember the first time I heard Danny Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a very hip hop anecdote. I was on the Los Campesinos <laughs> Tumblr, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which was updated by Gareth Campesinos of Los Campesinos. Which is that is, is that's not true. Okay, it's like the Ramones. Yep, Joey Ramones name wasn't Joey Ramones. Yep. Uh, it was Joey Campesinos, weirdly. Joey Campesinos, which is maybe where this came from. Uh, I was on Los Campesinos Tumblr album of the year in 2012. Right. It was 19. Mm-hmm. And I seen the album cover for Danny Brown's second record, Triple X, um, which was a woman, white background, Danny Brown in kind of black exploitation font, a woman's face and a line drawn, tongue out. Xanax pill, three X's on it. Yep. It's like, whoa, what's that? 
the guy follows comes and was like, so I like their lyrics, so check this out. And I just remember listening to it be like, I'd been into hip hop a wee bit through like Kanye and Jay Z, but that was very mainstream. Whereas this was like, oh, this is like mental shit. This is how scary music. This is, it's my first introduction. So when I say I don't music. really know anything about hip hop, I, I think I probably have always been of that sort of surface level mainstream. Mm -hmm. So like I've listened, you know, a lot of Kanye and Jay Z and and the like, and a few things that we've covered. But I didn't, I hadn't really, I, I'd heard of Danny Brown because you like your pitchforks. Mm -hmm. They absolutely. He's had about three or four best new music. They love this guy. Every time we release a track, it's normally best new music, best new track, and yeah. all that stuff. Um, I just never really got that stuck into it. I mm. remember when he did a uh, he a appearance on Alt J, um, did an album called Redux. I think he's done so many yeah guest appearances. Like he'll just do it. anybody who phones him up, he'll do. It. And it's always good, mm -hmm. but like Gorillas, mm -hmm. Alt J. I went to see Alt J on that tour, so it was like a, a remix album mm -hmm. of their the album that they were touring. And then yeah, they they I played at the Armadillo, and uh, Didn't they, really? they had none of the um, remix the rappers there, so they had a big screen where each rapper would appear on and then do the the rapping thing. It was still a good concert. They never really came back for that wee guy with the ice cakes. Uh, I reckon there might, there game? must be. I know the video you're talking about. <laughs> all all J songs sound like this. Um, what was that? What were they doing with the race? Put kicks? it in my butt, butt, put it in my butt, butt, put it in my butt right now. Uh -huh. Um I they must be junior music. I reckon they're gonna Junior music? They must be junior music. They must be Ju D U E New -E. N E W Wait. Music. They put an album out last year. What? Fifteen What? Fifteen? Oh Jay released an album last year. We have a music podcast. We should know that. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> What? An actual full new music album? A lot of them are remixes, but... Oh, wow. Wow. Well, they're, they've fallen way off them because they were a big sort of Guardian reading for sort of dad band, weren't they? Yes. Oh, I meant to talk about this, which is something we need to do. To, do uh, we should discuss quickly. Okay. We've been called out for being misogynistic ourselves. But <laughs> for By more than one person... Um, for describing Michael Bublé's mum music. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Crystal? I spoke to Crystal about it, uh -huh. but it wasn't her originally said it. It was, it was one of the fans. Was it a mum? Yeah. Oh. Who made a really good point of being like, well, I'm a mum. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I just want to clarify that when we called Michael Bublé mum music, I meant my mum specifically, not all mums. Shout out to mums. But no, this is fucked. Because, <laughs> because I'm sorry to the mums out there. And uh -huh. I'm a big fan of mums. Yeah. I think they're really cool. But um <laughs> But like if you say, Oh, that's like dead rock. If I accused the war on drugs or mm. Neil Young or Steely Dan of being like dead rock. Not that Steely Dan is dead rock. But if I accuse someone of some being dead rock, I wouldn't expect her dad to come. <laughs> One day you will be a dad, baby. Yeah, but I would say dad, you will be, <laughs> dad rock is a lot cooler than mum rock. No, it less is cool. Mums have got you think lives. you think war on drugs are uh, less cool than Michael Bublé? Can I shock you? <laughs> <laughs> Donald Alexander once didn't speak to me for a week because I said that the war on drugs were shit, and that's what I'm going to say. I went to see him live. I think they were a fantastic band. But then I am a dad. Yeah. <laughs> With a little fur baby. Three beautiful children. Um, um, so, uh, so to those bums out there, listen to this. And if you get scared, <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Um, so they did that song with Alt-J um, called Dead Crush. Danny, Danny, Brown. Danny Brown did. And that is home of this week's YouTube comment of the week. Oh, it is YouTube comment of the week. Now, it's all Jay and Danny Brown. So the video, I'm sure you can imagine, is a little bit trippy. It's one of those videos where it's got like trippy animations. Like, whoa, you're like in a effects. movie. You've taken, you've taken drugs. Yeah. Anyway. None better. Um, at Taser Nips. <laughs> Great. That's one of the best names I've heard a long time. <laughs> the idea of getting tased by someone's nipples. <laughs> That thing holding up the gun versus the molecule. I saw that in a trip like a year ago. Exact image. 
telling me to pick between living the life I was or practicing clinical and moderated drug use. <laughs> that trip saved my life. Thanks, PCP. <laughs> If you're having a discussion with yourself about how moderated your drug use is, don't make decisions <laughs> when you're on PCP. Is <laughs> the, I, I took PCP and the PCP told me <laughs> should I keep should taking PCP. keep taking PCP. <laughs> Thanks, PCP. My and his YouTube comment of the week comes from the video for the title track, Scare in the Hose. And I guess Scare in the Hose. And then I'd seen this guy post a similar comment under about seven YouTube videos. Right. Um, the guy's name is Sean Romanowski. Ten months ago, he said, "Still sitting here, wondering why you blocked me on Instagram huh? after I started following you in 2015, and you followed me and reposted my shit. What's up with that JPEG? What is up with that JPEG? Well, I would say if you're the type of person who does post stuff like that, you deserve to be blocked in the first place. It's obviously it's a, a an Ouroboros of shit." On Ouroboros, Aurora Borealis. No, on Ouroboros. At this time of year? And, uh, <laughs> Obviously. And exclu- ex- located exclusively in the Monkey Barrel podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steamed toes. Uh, ste- <laughs> <laughs> um, but Steamed hose. <laughs> that is the next Danny Brown JPEG Mafia. You, you got a rice cooker? Yes, I do have a rice cooker, actually. You do, they're really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 the thing about JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown is, to me, they're very, I mean, I think they are. JPEG is a cult hero, mm. and then Danny Brown's like a cult hero, but he will be interviewed in The Guardian. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like a kind of as big as a cult hero can get. Um, but like, JPEG's at that level where people can like get obsessed with him. They follow him back and they're like, hey, it's, it's 2015. Do you know what I mean? Hey, hey, it's 2015. Yeah, follow me by it. Why, why are you blocking me? Right. And people will notice it, you know, that level. Have you ever had to block someone for being yes. a bit obsessive? Yes. Yeah. Psst, yes. Can you unblock me? <laughs> Try to organize stuff for the podcast. nine years, bro. <laughs> I shared your shit. Um, <laughs> let's do a little quick, a little quick, quickie dive into the backgrounds of Senor's uh, Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia. We'll start with Danny Brown. Secret Pass Show, Secret Secret Pass Show. You do it fast and it feels like nice show. Got the money. You got the smoke. Secret Pass Show. Uh, he's from Detroit, Motown. Uh, he was born. Uh, he was born. Wow. End of Secret episode. Show. <laughs> no, his, uh, his parents were very, very young. His mum was 18 and his dad was 16 mm. when they had him. Um, and his, uh, his, his nan worked for Chrysler. And yeah. owned like five or six houses. What? Yeah. But then the way everything else that's sort of spoken about is like growing up in like basic poverty. So like when it's like owned five or six houses, I don't think it's like a crazy big landlord. I think it's like, you know, had a good job Probably and was cheap. bought a couple of places in the projects. Mm-hmm. Um, his parents split at 18 and he became a drug dealer. Do you know, he only became a drug dealer, so he said something to rap about, and then he went to jail. And he was like, fuck, I've took this too far. Yeah, I read that. I also read that he said, oh, when I was a drug dealer, I thought, I'll, I'll wait until I get in trouble with the law once, and then I'll stop. And then he got in trouble with the law once, and then kept doing it. Mm. So I I kind of feel like the, there's probably multiple reasons why he was doing it. I bet the money probably helped. Factors. Yeah, but I'm going to say no posho and Danny Brown. Are, no. Um, JPEG Mafia. Uh, born in Brooklyn, joined the military, aged 18. Yeah, as uh, a crazy record called veteran. That's kind of about being a veteran. Right, okay. Yeah, he served in Iraq and uh, went all over the world with the military, basically. He was discharged, though, for speaking up about bad practices from his superiors. Oh, yeah. A, a dishonorable discharge. He said something about honorable discharge. a I lot think of the said. rules in the army are not made thinking about black people. I don't know the way men by that, but it's interesting. Right, okay. Yeah. So again I'm gonna say no 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 posho. There. Are there any secret posho rappers? I guess Drake. Uh, and can you? Um so yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> Asked and answered. Secret I think my most interesting because obviously I we have done hip hop a few times, um, and it's always kinda, you know, uh 
rough early lives. Yep. But uh, I think my favourite Secret Paws show, not a Secret Paws show necessarily, but Rick Ross. Mm-hmm. You know Rick Ross, the rapper, the big fat guy? Yep. He was a prison guard. Oh, really? And that's like the a opposite screw. of going to jail. Yeah. He was screwed Well, he, did. he still went to jail. He went every day. <laughs> he went every day and he got, he got paid to do yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. he was wearing nice trousers when he was there. <laughs> so... Um, MC Hammersmith, he's a posh rapper, quite famously. We need to get him on. <laughs> Talk about some rap music. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, did you know that uh, Danny Brown nearly signed with 50 Cent? Yeah. And G-Unit? They refused because at the time when I was getting into him, 2012, he was wearing really skinny jeans and he was a really skinny guy and he had big, crazy af, like a kind of so emo this is fringe afro. Kind of the childish Gambino era as well of yeah. like kind of hip hop that it was acceptable for hipster white guys to be really into. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, Correct. The, yeah. Need to remind you of the Lost Campesinos Tumblr. Um, Danny Brown told MTV, it was a real thing. 50 was was with it. He just didn't sign me because of my jeans. <laughs> he liked the music, but he didn't like the way I looked. Yeah. Well, I mean, skinny jeans cost us all a lot of uh, a lot of job opportunities, I'm sure, over the years. I think it'll probably cost me a few kids. Yeah. <laughs> I only really swapped over. You know, I was a wee bit behind the curve. I think you disregarded skinny jeans a few years ago. Yeah, but you know what? Before I um, take any credit for, for seeing any trends, can I just say that was more to the massive weight gain. <laughs> Right. You know, my body very much this saw agreed. a fashion trend <laughs> ahead of time. I think you have always been trendy. What's yeah. your size? Like it's always been on point. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting. Maybe we should get a graph of my weight gain versus current trends. And uh, and maybe then we can predict where <laughs> things were going to go. With your weight? Well, I'm losing weight at the moment. Oh, right. Well, uh, skinny so, jeans are coming back. So that man. means skinny jeans are coming back. Or maybe not skinny jeans, but like, I mean, crop tops and uh, short shorts, you know, they're kind of having a moment over the summer. Paul Mescal, thank you. Yeah. So, the Iron Claw, thank you. But uh, what's in at the moment is those, have you seen those woolen balaclava hoods? Yeah, I've seen a few of them. Um, so, I mean, that's... IRA is coming back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. never went away. We never went away. Oh. You only have to have your a warm ears once. Um, <laughs> Son, give me your blood. <laughs> my dad is not from Northern Ireland. Thank you very much. No, he's, he's not. not remember it's from the IRA. The Thank Republic you. of Ireland. Thank you. The great, Thank you, Devil. The Great Republic, as he calls it in his speeches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what were we talking about there? Um, we're talking about the album. Skinny Jeans. Skinny Jeans. And uh, so uh, Danny Brown was like, kind of, I guess. There was a good line on Triple X where he was talking about Wiz Khalifa and he was like, he done black and yellow. I'm going to call it Black and Emo. He sounded exactly like that. Hey, I mean, he has this crazy rapping style. Yeah. That is <laughs> like really unique. Nobody sounds like that. Nobody sounds like that. Uh, and I have to say on this album, mm-hmm. the combination of his insane rapping style, his vocals over the... In, I mean, it's called Scaring the Hose for a reason, right? Yeah. A lot of these beats are fucking crazy. It's overwhelming. It can be at times of woman. I do think it's really amazing, mm. though. Oh, it's incredible. But there's but it's a lot. And I have to say, though, that there are points where you just can't hear what you're saying. It's something I was interested in because I remember I was talking about that. Another album that was on my best albums of the year last year was uh, Short Fictions. had a record called uh, Oblivion Will Own Me and Death Will Only Love Me. Mm. For for uh, in brackets void fellow in brackets uh, and they were having a discussion on Twitter about the production. Some people had an issue with the production because the vocals were kind of hard to make out. And he was saying that uh, in underground indie music there is an aesthetic that you can do where uh, the vocals are mixed so that they're not super present. They're not like right up next to you. They're like halfway through the mix, and really the guitars take precedence in the mix. Yeah, and that's just something to go. It's, it kind of it's like what you're doing with that in indie rock emo music is to go do you know i'm saying this but it's pretty crazy stuff that i'm saying so i don't mind if you can't make it out if you want to go on rap genius and delve into the lyrics and look at what i'm saying i'm saying some pretty mad stuff but i don't necessarily want you to hear it straight away and i think this is kind of the same thing uh, uh if that is the intention mm-hmm. then i can kind of understand it but it does I don't not, think anything. This is a mistake. Uh, you know. I, well, yeah, it does. But I don't think it works. 
You don't think it works? Well, that aspect of it, because I don't, I'm not left there going, mm, I'm interested to see what he's saying and look it up. I'm just frustrated that I can't hear what he's saying. Right. Do you know what I mean? You, you've been scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified. You are a hoe. Oh, no. Sorry. It turns out I'm a hoe. <laughs> Tis a pity she's a hoe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just found, not throughout all of it, but there is definite points where the, the if you're going to use the voice, you know, as an instrument, mm-hmm. Rather than it be a that's vehicle. exactly what they that's the exact term that they said that the voice is an instrument. The voice is an instrument, rather than have it as a, a vehicle to communicate words, mm-hmm. then the voice has to sound better than it does on this. Do you know what I mean? I don't know because he has such an interest, and they both have quite quite interesting. Uh, and Danny Brown, you know, every he's really interested in voice as an instrument because the two kind of main people he's been uh, collaborating with recently is this protege called the Loopers. Uh, who's a Detroit rapper who does a lot of dolphin samples? Uh, so dolphin, there's, yeah. So there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of that and like yeah, Crash okay. Bandicoot samples. To be fair, when I'm listening to dolphins, <laughs> I can never understand what they're saying. Well, so I can see the influence there. You would really like Zulupers, I think. <laughs> uh, and then this guy called Bruiser Wolf, who's mm-hmm. part of the Bruiser Brigade, which is uh, Danny Brown. The Bruiser Brigade. Yeah, that's so it's such a funny name for a so rap group. Class. <laughs> Bruiser Where the bruiser brigade You're gonna get bruised <laughs> You're gonna walk away With a black eye I don't know why Vincent Price Is in the <laughs> Bruiser brigade <laughs> Off the clock Vincent Price When he's uh, cruising uh, And then this guy Called Bruiser Wolf Who's part of the Bruiser brigade And he is like He has a really Interesting voice it Sounds mm. like that And he raps like this And it's like Really old fashioned Rap style Yeah I think he is really You know when it comes to voice as an instrument, he's like, you know, he's like, uh, he's not Joe Satriani. You mm-hmm. know, I would say you have somebody like Buster Rhymes who's very virtuosic. Danny Brown's is virtuosic, but it's more like no wave noise. I I, I understand all that, but I just not. You didn't sh- like it. I, well, I just think that I don't know if that aspect of this works to that degree because instead of feeling like, oh, that's just a. Uh, an instrument that someone's making with their mouth, all the actual sensation of listening to it is, could you just turn that bit down and that bit up just a little bit? Like that's the how you feel. <laughs> and if like that's that how I feel listen listening to it, yeah. to it, and I'm like, well, this is this is the slight aspect of it that hasn't worked. What has worked though are these insane crazy beats. Yeah. It, the first time I listened to it, I was like, it reminded me of a friend of mine who the first time they ever took drugs, um, the first drug they took was ketamine. Mm-hmm. And oh, and yeah, and everyone was like, that's an insane first drug. Mm. And that is what it's like listening to this as someone who doesn't know much about hip hop. Mm. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Idris Elba. Yeah, Idris Elba eating chicken, man. You did Idris Elba at Coachella, did a DJ set, and someone's put up a big picture of you coughing when you're eating chicken, behind <laughs> you? I mean, that's really what's happening right here. <laughs> that is, that's, that's fucking what's going on. Uh, so, some of the samples on this are insane see the one i had such a crazy sample journey well one of the best joys of this album is sitting with spotify on one monitor if you've got two monitor pc which i do oh and someone on streaming the other years ago. monitor having uh who sample.com open mm-hmm. and going song by song and just listening you don't even have to do that because who sampled has a thing where it shows you the two youtube videos and the exact time well, that's what i mean videos. but you, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. You don't have to do that, I guess. <laughs> you don't have to have Spotify up. Yeah, I guess you don't. Yeah. It, uh, who's someone to come? I have to say, the outlay it isn't great. You the know UA, I mean? if you're listening. Uh, no offense. No, no offense. The oh, UA sucks. They're, they're going to sample us saying <laughs> this and make some sort of hilarious diss track. They're going to say that this was sampled in a video of a guy shaking his <laughs> leg. <laughs> Oh, you want to hear uh, these two guys talking? Oh, here's a big open bum going. Someone has also made a Spotify playlist. I know you don't use Spotify, uh, but someone's made Actually a Spotify. Use Apple Music. Someone who's uh, made a Spotify playlist featuring each song followed by the three songs that are sampled in it, uh, and it's a fucking wild ride. So sometimes rappers use loads of samples, but kind of like it feels a bit forced. You know what I mean? It's a bit like to be funny memed. Is that fair to say? Would you say? Maybe. And, uh, but these, I mean, when they're pulling like random samples, do you know what I mean? Like uh, in Garbage Pail Kids, when oh, they yeah, sample yeah. the 1980s Japanese noodle commercial, I, I could, I could see, because that's kind of, it, it has an element almost of 
OMG random. I found this old random thing. I'm not saying this song does, but it could do. Yeah. If in the wrong hands. Sure. But done here. With the impeccable taste of Peggy. It works incredibly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. I watched the video. guitar that comes in? It's like... Oh, that's so sick, that guitar. He played the guitar. That's not so cool. Yeah, yeah, I've seen... um, It's a cool documentary. The the documentary about this album mm. on youtube it's like half hour and it's just showing a lot of like behind the scenes of them actually just making it you can you can tell the sort of reverence with which they hold each other which is really cool it's a real sh- i don't know i don't know if this is a time to bring it up necessarily but i was reading an interview with danny brown basically this and quaranta were recorded like in the last couple of years and danny brown's basically had a real uh i don't know the right language to use addiction problem yep um and Danny Brown did an interview. He said, "When we were making Scaring the Hose, it was really hard to work with me. I was at my drunkest at that time. There would be times when he'd come down here and I'd get blacked out drunk, and we wouldn't do shit for a weekend. And then there'd be times when he'd come and I'd do five songs in a day. I would love to make another album, but I would understand if he never wanted to work with me again." Wow. And you watch that video and you're like, they seem to like each other, but I guess you would edit out the bits where he's fucking thrown up and stuff. Also, I mean, he's like, oh, he came down and I got blackout drunk, but he was probably having a drink and a good time as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Potentially. It's like, well, he just came down and we just fucking hung out for a weekend. It was fun. Yeah. So anyway, I watched this video um, by a guy called Navi D, who I want to shout out. Um, he did a, this. Is a Was short... he one of the Navis that worked in the railways uh, in the 1800s? No, he's from Avatar. Oh. Uh, uh, he has a video called like how JPEG mafia is a genius of production or something like that. And, uh, he breaks down a lot of songs in this album and the way in which he uses samples. It's really interesting. And, uh, he uses that sample as an example of how it's, he's found something that is like quite naturally musical, but where most people who use samples use the sample as instrument, JPEG mafia often uses the sample as percussion specifically. And that's what sort of sets him apart from a lot of other beat makers. And that's, that's why it always sounds so cool. Also, there's a long bit about the way in which he uses transitions. So most of these songs have like... Three f- seen the first track when the jungle thing comes. It's like they don't even rap over it. It's just a transition. It's like a bridge between yeah. the two bits. Yeah, so. yeah. So the way he makes bridges, so that there's like three or four different crazy beats per song. Yeah. That I mean, when those guitars come in, that's a completely different thing. Um, yeah, the, be- the beats alone on this are fucking crazy. I kind of... It, it can be overwhelming. It can be a lot. It kind of makes me think this is the music that if I wanted to kill an old person, yeah, I would put them on, the, on headphones and and make them listen to... Oh, you can't say that. It's not nice to old people. <laughs> I'm an old person. Wendy, you'll be old as well. Do you know, it's so funny that like <laughs> when that person said that about the mums, I spoke to Crystal about it and, and I kind of was like, you know what? I think maybe we were a little bit out of line and a little bit unfair to a lot. And Crystal was saying, yeah, because sometimes... As a mum, you are, you know, there. you are kind of, you, as a woman, you become a mum and then that's it. You're just like, well, that's you now, your mum, that's everything you're about. And like, she has that great joke about it, about mum jeans and... Mum orgy. Uh, mum orgy is the punchline. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I was yeah, like, God, yeah, it, it must be kind of shit to just, you know, you've had a kid, so what? And then suddenly you're described as liking Michael Bublé. That mm-hmm. must be shit. And I thought, I oh, will talk about you on the pod. <laughs> talk about on the pod and to sort of correct ourselves publicly and you've just gone <laughs> <laughs> which I think something is great cool about me <laughs> give us a list something really cool about yeah. me I don't take criticism yeah <laughs> oh I know <laughs> I've picked up on that don't you worry nobody ever criticize me please that's all I'm saying to the universe <laughs> never do it never pull me up i actually think i respond to criticism too well and mm. that if someone says mm, you're a little baby aren't you yeah i'm a little baby <laughs> goo goo gaga <laughs> you literally are like a turtle who just rolls on his back and just wants his belly tickled so in a way i'm sort of a spongebob type um in my response to criticism whereas you're more of a squidward interesting have you ever seen spongebob be criticized for the way he makes crabby patties <laughs> he doesn't take it well <laughs> Um, should we have a look at some of the album art? Well, I have I wanted to, say. to say that one of the, what you're talking about using, I never really even thought about that, but using the, the samples as percussion. There's, see on Scaring the Hose, see that song? The, the clapping, yeah. 
people in the comments on YouTube, on his YouTube comment of the week, mm. again, were like, is that a guy jacking off? Is that someone making the butt cheeks clap? What is that? And then I went on who sampled and yeah. it was like untitled track by Dirty Beaches. Now, yeah. last night, Pitchfork got <laughs> uh, folded into GQ. Yeah. And I put a thing up and I was like, what? just as a micro respect, what's the best song you'd ever been put on to by Pitchfork? And to me, one of my, my favorite songs ever that I remember seeing the best new track for, best new song, was Dirty Beaches. Um, Lord Knows Best Which is a kind of Remember when we covered Suicide? Yeah It's a kind of modern Suicide Suicide, suicide uh, By Suicide uh, It's kind of modern version of that By this Taiwanese guy um, Where he takes like old Japanese films That were ripping off American films And cuts them up into samples and stuff And Pitchfork done an interview with him Where he wrote this song Untitled In Paris In 2000 And like 13 or something yeah and it's just this guy and i think he was kind of taking the piss but he's under a bridge in paris and he's just going like and he's got this guy playing saxophone with him and that's what they use as a sample and i was just like full circle so here's the thing do you think peggy read that same pitchfork oh he must have because it's just, that song doesn't exist outside that video well, that interesting because I was thinking about using that song as my playlist choice because we both found it via who sampled yeah, yeah, presumably. Yeah, uh, and then I, 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 it's I, not on Spotify. I tried to interview Dirty Beaches when he played Nice and Sleazy in two thousand and fourteen, I think. Right, but he was too busy. Being he was clapping, out his face clapping on, on, on the bridges, and clapping on the bridges in Paris. Yeah. But he got back to me. I remember one of the questions I asked him was, "Why do you not play Lord Knows Best anymore?" Is it because it's too popular? And he said, it's because I wrote it about somebody I'm in love with and they don't love me anymore. Oh, wow. What an amazingly honest um, <laughs> question to give a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> See if a 14-year-old boy asked me why I don't tell... Um... Well, a 14-year-old boy was actually behind that criticism for the <laughs> uh, the, the mum, uh, mum gate. So You're about to get slapped up. <laughs> 14 year old boy let's have a look at some of this album art then oh. shall we what we got here it's sort of a black exploitation um take isn't it it's jpeg mafia with a gun and a bible Danny Brown sort of vicar has a pirate's hat on and a shotgun on his lap and then there's two uh, ladies it, well it's like a it's sort of like 80s uh black cinema isn't it it's cool as fuck yes very very cool you ever see black dynamite would you wear that as a t-shirt um, I thought we were going to say, would you wear that as an outfit? <laughs> would you wear a big crucifix around your neck and uh, a do-rag? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would. I think there's a time in my life where I would have worn a do-rag. Really? Oh, uh, you did? No, I did not. You had the blonde hair and the, the bandana? Oh, yeah, I guess <laughs> I did. But I didn't wear a do-rag. How crazy is it? And this is kind of relevant because he does get mentioned in the album. Mm. What's going on with Hulk Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> not relevant no no, no ding it's... not having that ding ding I'm dinging that? you that's uh, irrelevant that's how you get attention in a hotel reception that's <laughs> how you shut someone up who's trying to talk about Hulk Hogan um because uh, he was wearing a do-rag right big Thundercat fan mm. and I think the fashion of the NWO faction in the 90s in WCW was an attempt to replicate the fashion of uh, the NWA yeah there's quite a lot of wrestling references in this, actually. I wanted to run some past you. There's the one, uh, is it, uh, uh, Test and Christian? Edge and Christian? You doing Edge and Christian? I didn't even hear that. Yeah. There's like 20. This is he the really Edge. Liked yeah. He was in All Elite Wrestling. Did you see that clip? AEW is yeah. falling off, I've heard. I can't believe you keep saying that to me. Here's something that proves you wrong because he's line. <laughs> oh, fuck y'all. I feel like Papa John laughing straight to the bank. I'm Tony Khan. Now, Tony Khan runs all elite wrestling. So if he's laughing straight to the back, how's he falling off? He's actually very wealthy. Not only does it, not only, don't L- make me. But there's lots of, I mean, there, there's lots of owners who make money whilst their companies are falling off. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Pitchfork for one. <laughs> there you go. GQ magazine, Condé See, Nast. Yeah, Condé Nast is doing all right. Condé, my fucking ass. Yeah, <laughs> if you could. Um, uh, so, and there's another good one. He uh, says, uh, Whale, you. I can't even read my This is the kind of way he flows as well. <laughs> <laughs> While you... While you strangling the truth in your hands, I've been stretching your girl iron cheek. Mm. While you're tweeting the truth in your tweets, I've been... She- yeah, iron cheek, you know him? The iron cheek, I remember him, yes. He was an Iranian powerlifter. Really, you should say, while well, you're Xing. 
rather than yeah, tweet tweeting because we don't we don't tweet anymore we incorrect post on X. we post on x but yeah there's loads of the uh, jpeg mafia showed up in all elite wrestling ricky starks was having a match with darby allen having a also, marriage a match a match okay with darby allen who also gets shouted out in this record coming off the top rope like darby uh and then they cut to this video of uh darby allen being put in a body bag and put down a big slide right and then jpeg mafia is at the top of the slide and he goes ricky starks you think that uh, you can dress up like Darby? Well, imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery. So at AEW Dynamite, he's going to take you out. And then it comes back and the announcer goes, JPEG Mafia with some strong words. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I watched that on the train here and I'm just like in love with this album. Because all the wrestling references. The wrestling speaks references. To you. It's and... crazy. But you know what? It's like, this is what you kind of want from the artist you like, isn't it? It is out there experimental them doing what they want they're not like trying to please a crowd they're just making something that they think is really good they're sure. like collaborating with their peers in a really interesting and exciting way and the product is good so interesting to compare it to run the jewels because uh, i remember one of the first times like i'm not as into jpeg mafia as i am danny brown i have listened to a few of his records but not as in depth i don't love him the same way one of the first times i remember hearing about him was in 2019 Danny Brown put a record out called Not I'm Saying, which was kind of executively produced by Q-Tip, but one of the tracks was produced by JPEG Mafia, and it was Run The Jewels, both featuring on a, Dan a Danny Brown track called And you're, Three you're a big RTJ fan as well? Wow, well, yes. But I think it's interesting, because they have a song called Run The Jewels, which mm. is interesting, because they both collaborated with Run The Jewels on that last album. But Run The Jewels, to me, is like a complete attempt by two middle-aged dudes... Uh, not against them. To, and that's another way upset any dads out here. They're Run both the, dads. LP yeah, and, okay. Uh, Killer Mike, I think. Um, older guys and kind of one last ditch attempt to be famous. They work together, you know, against all instincts. An East Coast guy and an Atlanta guy come together doing this big thing. But it was like a crossover. So, you know, let's get Zach De La Roca to do a track and let's get Travis Barker to play drums on it. Let's try and cross over a white audience. Whereas this doesn't seem like an attempt to cross over. This seems like an attempt to just make the maddest fucking scare the whole music. Absolutely. Lean into to the weirdest aspects of your music. I mean, and also, I mean, you've got a fucking black exploitation motifs on your, on your cover. Um, yeah, no, this is just, this is just making what you want to make. Yeah. With the freedom that you now have after many years of success. That's I, cool. That's what you want. I was going to say Without something. it being, sorry, self-indulgent, mm -hmm. which it just manages not to be, I guess, with the humor that it carries. And just the skill. Yeah. Of even how blown out it is. I remember listening to Sleigh Bells, which, and, and reading about how their production was intentionally blown out. And I was like, what? Mm. And now I get it. Some of the samples that I loved on this in uh, Jack Harlow Combo Mill, you have this old jazz music that was reminded me of vince garaudi jazz piano yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh, there was a song called uh cosmic rain dance which is uh on uh i can't find which one it is but it's like this weird um cool shit uh is that f oh, oh and fentanyl tester of course has that uh, my milkshake brings other boys to the art and they're like it's better than yours then yeah. uh, it's better than yours a good drink so like a sped up hyper pop sample speeds up raises the pitch Mm. Makes it crazy, recognizable, but not. Um, so many cool. Danny uh, Brown had bankrupted himself, clearing samples for, I believe, uh, old when he put old out. Yeah, 70 grand he spent yeah. on uh, on on samples, and then the album only sold like 20,000 copies or something. <sighs> mm -hmm. I, think, I think that was Atrocity Exhibition, maybe, but yeah. that's absolutely fucked. But that's the dedication. This is the way can... look inside. Oh, maybe I should put Atrocity Exhibition on the playlist. By, it's Joy Division. By Joy Division, song. yeah. But he... This is the way look inside. When are we going to do Joy Division, man? Anyway, I haven't even mentioned this. Danny Brown follows me on Twitter. What? Do you know this? No. Danny Brown... Is, this is you the know coolest this? You heard about this? You seen this? Wow. Well, how many does he... Is he one of these accounts that follows like a half a million people? He has 16,000 that he but, follows, but he's followed by 300,000. So it's not just he follows everybody. 16,000 is quite a lot, but a lot. it's not... It's he's not seen with, some of my tweets. Well, that's it. It's not out with uh, comprehension there. He's he's when you've typed, sat here with a a packet oh, of pepper pigs, that, man. 
watching AEW. Start watching AEW Dynamite with JPEG Mafia eating a pack of pepper pigs. Uh, Maybe she's trying to send a coded one. Do you know what I mean? So say something like that. AEW watching JPEG Mafia, listening to Stepper Pig, which is one of the names of the songs on this record, mm. and see if he see if he, has he ever liked one of your tweets. Do you know how he followed me? Uh, he clicked follow. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> He, uh, he was tweeting Black Sabbath. He right. put up the video for Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And I just t- tweeted back. I went, Living just for dying, dying just for you. Yeah. And he liked Terry Fobie and he's never on Fobie. Of you singing it? No, just me. You typed out the lyrics. Capital letters, Black Sabbath lyrics back to him. And he followed you back based on that? Yeah. This guy's That's fucking, dude's rock, man. That is dude's rock. Do you know the coolest thing about having Danny Brown follow you on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Because his and my Nintendo Switch accounts are both connected to a Twitter, I can see what games Danny Brown plays on my Nintendo Switch. That's fucking crazy. That's, What's he playing? Haven't checked in a while. Wow. He didn't really put enough time into Slay the Spire. Right, he gave You it- know and me know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to be putting 300 hours in. Yeah, man. Slade Aspire is a big one for sure. Yeah, yeah. I he w- didn't really play it enough. If there was a Slade Aspire fucking uh, sample in this, mm-hmm. it'd be a 10 out of 10. What, what sound? Um, it's mostly kind of atmospheric, kind of dungeon music, isn't it? Yeah, but then you, you could put that in. You just fucking cut it up, loop it, raise There's a the lot pitch, of video speed game it stuff up. in this. Yeah. Uh, the PS. <laughs> That actually brings us to, um, oh, actually brings us to something called. Uh, ah, two guys reviewing tattoos. We're gonna Google and we're searching and we'll choose if it's tattoo or tattoo boo. We're judging the ink, yeah, that's what we do. Full sleeve of face, that's a big skull or wig. Bet you pick the design, is it a bad or just fine? A dragon or a skull, potential or death. You cannot hide and we will design it on that we will or tattoo but yeah. Very good one this week. It's been a while since we've had the full uh, OG outing. Do you and know what? I've actually really rested myself the last couple of weeks. You've been resting your vocal cords? <laughs> resting my vocal cords. We play Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. A hundred hours. I've beat it. I don't know if I told you I beat it. Oh really? Good well end. Wow. Wow. What a journey. Yeah. Um, I don't have time. Too busy working. Too busy grinding this guy. Too busy hustling. Too busy grinding your beans. Yep. Uh, so let's get the tattoo up. <laughs> so I just want to. I just really want to cover Danny Brown again. So I've focused on JPEG this week. Um, okay. So main well, one for me is face tattoo. Instead of a teardrop, he has a cursor uh, on okay. his face. I mean, this actually kind of sums up uh, JPEG Mafia a lot, doesn't it? In that. He's very online. He's mm-hmm. like funny. Um, he's cool, but funny. And that's what that is. Instead of a teardrop, it's a, a cursor. Mm-hmm. And he's got a, then a bigger cursor on, the arm. on his uh, on his right shoulder. It's just so cool to have a cursor. I've never seen that. And it's so, it's not an obvious thing, but it's like, that should be the, yeah. new, the new teardrop. It is something that we see and we use <laughs> Every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. I see that cursor more than I see my own grandmother's face. Uh, well, yeah. Um, so I think it's cool. The face, I think you can only really be an international rapper and get away with a cursor face tattoo. Uh, I sure, don't my mom think... has a face tattoo now. What? My mom has a face tattoo now. Your mom has a face tattoo? Yeah. She shaved her eyebrows off and tattooed them on. Right. Okay. That's slightly different to getting a cursor. Hey. Because it's... It's bigger. It's, but that's like a specific... Th- thing you're trying to replicate isn't it try to replicate her eyebrows well yeah you yeah try, yeah yes. i don't get it but you don't normally have curses on your face <laughs> do you know what i mean you do if someone's looking at a picture of you on the internet and they want to click it sure but that's not you mm. that's a good point hot take um so i think it's slightly different than your mom uh, getting her eyebrows tattooed uh is her, uh, were her eyebrows falling out i don't know she just wanted more Definition. Defined eyebrows. That's what I mean. It's, it's like a different thing that you're trying yeah. to do. It's like when people get their uh, their, their bald heads tattoos. But that looks like tattoos. it could be just a... My dad's very interested in that because he's a hairdresser and a tattoo guy. 
But you also get like a woman who've had mastectomies. Get, is it mastectomies with the breasts where they get the, the nipple tattoos put Why on? Are you that? I'm just saying that there are there are actual reasons for people getting these tattoos. Are you trying to say that I'm my gonna, mom doesn't deserve a face tattoo? I'm, no, cause... I'm not saying that. I'm saying you said it as if it was something to be like, well, can you believe that? And I'm like, no, there's a functional reason for these that is worthy. And How I'm, about I'm, you I'm, take listen, my side against my mom sometimes, Liam? I will never, ever boohoo someone who has had a nipple tattoo after a mastectomy. Let me tell you that right now, okay? Nobody's asking you to. Well, I'm telling you. Do you think I would bring up as a tattoo woohoo boohoo someone who's had their nipples tattooed? I don't know what you're your capable of anymore, okay? <laughs> You've lost it entirely. <laughs> asking me to fucking drag your mum on a podcast? What the fuck's going I on? I think you'd say that. Jesus Christ. I just said, what do you think? This is a woohoo from me, but only on him. Anybody else, including your mum, can't, <laughs> can't get a curse of face tattoo. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I, I forgot to send it over, but there's act, someone's actually went through all the pictures of JPEG Mafia available and catalogued a list of every tattoo. And there's a guide on Reddit. This is how crazy yeah, his well, fans go. Super fans. Yeah. Um, uh, and there's a it's whole like a list. Of, uh, Ghost in the Shell tattoo. Oh. The Life Bar from Zelda. He's got the love hearts that are halfway down. Oh, there's someone else had that. We've had that before. Yeah, I think so. It's quite emo type shit. Real kind of uh, game merch there's a, a key he's got a, 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 a i'm getting a key tattoo Probably next a week kingdom hearts key isn't it? um I yes mean, that's not the face from kingdom hearts that looks like a little one punch man anime face but kingdom hearts key uh he's really into, like anime and stuff uh there's a moogle from final fantasy the little yeah um, bear guy he's a, he's a cool guy he's a real, i love him he's a real world i really want to listen to his he has a it's, it's a wrestling thing obviously but as a kind of uh trademark for his stuff he has the wee voice that goes you think you know me and that's like edge's entrance music that, yeah that's what i saw earlier yeah 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 that's so bad this yeah okay edge is he still is he still around so he's it's interesting <laughs> you say that oh look at the time <laughs> we need to wrap up <laughs> so uh, it's interesting you say did that you because enjoy... he's just joined all elite wrestling so people think it's falling off but oh, yeah i mean edge, getting, what, how old is he how old is he do you know i don't actually I, I, I don't see age. I don't <laughs> see when somebody is a dad or a mom. To me, that doesn't define them personally. Um, AEW dad wrestling. Please don't see that because <laughs> it's a valid criticism. <laughs> um, very old roster right now, but they focus on the youth as well. We're not, we're not talking about wrestling right, anymore. Okay. So uh, I have to say, um, this album uh, was a bit overwhelming at first. The more I listened to it, the more I was able to. Um, so focus in on the uh, the execution of the incredible beats mm. um, and all of the different experimentation that was going on. I enjoyed the beats more than I did the rapping because I found the rapping hard to make out a lot. Mm. Um, I've listened to some other Danny Brown stuff and I know it's not the case for the majority of his work, but particularly Good in this point. album, sometimes I did find it to be a bit too much happening at once. Um, it is out there for sure. If you're not a big hip-hop head, then this probably will be a lot, um, but it is something that deserves your attention, I think, and rewards repeat listening. Mm. Um, I'm going to listen to it again on the way home. There's a, a, a few songs that I really, really loved. Fentanyl Tester, Jack Harlow, Combo Meat, Garbage Pale Kids for that fucking yeah. guitar riff that we've done about a million times, Lean Beef Patty, and <laughs> the titular track, Scaring the Hose, um, as well as Run the Jewels. I mean, that's six songs there that I've tried to single out as being highlights. It is short. It comes in at like 35 minutes or something. Most of these songs are like two minutes long. Most songs feel like they've got three songs within the song. Um, it is really two artists who are working at the top of their game, working together to create something really unique and original. I loved it. I hope that another one comes out. It's interesting you say that because I remember someone criticizing SpongeBob the same way. They were saying, you know, for 20 minutes, you can take that. <laughs> that, yeah. But for an hour and a half film, maybe it's not. Which is, you know, an incorrect criticism of the Spongebob film, which is actually very funny. It's very good. Very good, actually. David Hasselhoff makes an appearance? David Hasselhoff appears R.I.P. to a real one. Unfortunately, dead. Is he dead? I think so. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think he, I don't think he is. You didn't look Can we up. check that? Can we get it up? <laughs> is David Hasselhoff dead? I think he died a few years ago. No, I don't think the Hoff is... Oh, he's still going. Still going. Okay. <laughs> well, you take a few wild swings, right? <laughs> Scaring the Hoff. This, he'll be dead by the time this comes out. I promise you that. I will be the change you want to see in the world, as Mahatma Gandhi once said. <laughs> um, Any other final points you want to make about this? I think I said, in the, and this is something I feel really bad about, mm. on the top ten list, I said, oh, Danny Brown's Karanta, 
I love it. Didn't really enjoy scaring the hose. When I listened to this, I didn't like it that much. And it's an issue I have sometimes when an artist puts a new record out, is I'll go, where are they going with this? Then when they have a new thing out, you see where they're going and you go back and you go, oh, that wasn't the direction they're heading in. That was a course correction or that was an experiment. And I just, listen, this week, listen to this. It's a really overwhelming record, but it's like, I think it's like, maybe it's because I wear glasses or something, but huh? when you go into the ocean, right, <laughs> and the, you're like, oh, that looks like it's going to be comfortable. But sometimes the waves push you down and you get like upside down in the water. And like, you're just rushed. And you can't hear properly and you get salt in your mouth. And you're like, this is fucking crazy in here. But it's cool. And that's what listening to this record is like. It's like being in the ocean. Right, okay. Chris obviously like drowning. He's been in Millport for the weekend. Um, <laughs> which songs are you going to put on the playlist? I am going to put on... Um, Garbage Peel Kids. You're going to like wild guitar. And also... The Japanese. Yeah. But I mean, the title track's fucking ripper so i'll put on scaring the hose then the title track um mm. my playlist choice it has to be one of the songs featured uh in the sampling of the record because so much of the record is the enjoyment of going through and this it's almost like a history of black music there's like disco there's jazz there's all these other weird samples as well as it being a sort of little almost mood board of what jp matthew is into with the wrestling and game references um so i'm going to put in cosmic rain dance by cybertron uh which is on the song run the jewel Wow. Uh, this, one of the things I like about this record is that they put out an EP of uh, B sides called uh, the DLC pack. DLC pack. That's so. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, fuck, why has no one else called it that? Because it makes perfect sense. And yeah, it's so, yeah. yeah, it's so on brand. Yeah, it's, it's cool. like the Dawn Guard of Skyrim. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, and they have a track that I can kind of understand why they didn't put it on it, but it's like a little bit more of a traditionally produced song. And it's just. That's a, funny, isn't it? To not include something because it's too normal. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like a real traditional soulful sample and then it's like it's like not hyperactive and weird it's like really like it's called uh tell me where to go mm-hmm. and it's um it's kind of heartbroken song and i just it's them to still them too so it's still a wee bit weird but it's like really i was like going into the dlc going oh this will be the fucking like craziest shit going and then i just Right in, the, right in the balls. Right in the kisser. Yeah. Um, good yeah, stuff. I my balls my kisser. I've really enjoyed uh, talking about Danny Brown and JPEG Matthew with you this week. I uh, hope that our listeners have enjoyed listening to I think us we should do Danny Brown again. Talk about it. At Danny Brown point. may come back <laughs> at some point. I'll tweet him. I'll message him and try and get him. Come on. <laughs> to talk about fucking... Uh, I, I try to enjoy the vision. Oh, that would be cool. He liked Manny Thatcher. <laughs> Um, transition. Did you like it? Did you listen? Uh, I need to write my own Did you like it? Did you listen? Um, Are enjoy you shitting? Are you pissing? An album. Are you shitting? Are you pissing? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed your listening. We hope you have a great week. We're the two music geeks. Don't we're, rap at the end. We're chat- please please okay. don't do this. Right. It's, it's not good. Okay. Ha- <laughs> but you're good. Mums are good. Can we just clarify that? Shout out to mums. Shout out to the milfs out there. Um, whether or not. Uh, you like Michael Bublé, which you might not necessarily just because you're a mum. If you're a mum who likes Danny Brown, please get in touch. Yes, please. Because that's cool. That is cool AF. Uh, hey, have a great week. We'll see you next time on uh, Patreon. Uh, normies, worms, you're going to have to wait two weeks. Sorry.